What's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with a review for Greenleaf Season 2, Episode 12. So let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so the show opens with uh, Pastor Skanks. He is preaching to his large con congregation at Triumph, and his message is all about inclusivity, um, including the gays. And, of course, everybody is not feeling it. You get your few amens, but you get a whole bunch of uncomfortable looks from, um, you know, his congregation. They don't really know what to make of this. But he says, it's time to say that God loves the gays. And I was like, wow. Now that is something that you do not hear in the churches. Churches will tap dance around the subject and they'll say something that the Lord loves everybody. Oh my God, don't hit my car. <laughs> These people got hit my car. Um, they'll tap dance around it, but they won't take a stand on it. So this is an interesting approach. And Rick Fox, who is reporting, writing a story, is in the back. And he's listening like, oh, word. So the next day, Skanks is on the cover of the newspaper. And, of course, the bishop and mayor just like, Ugh. Okay, they want to know what his angle is. They're not sure if he's even sincere about this whole thing. And I guess that this is the story that Rick Fox was writing. Grace walks in the room and they're like, oh, your boy is on the cover out there preaching that the gays, you know, is all one and they all need to be in the church and we need to stop turning people away. She was like, that's not my boy. I'm just saying that, you know, in this one particular instance, I agree with him. But of course, Bishop and May feel like this is something personal, a personal attack on their family. So Bishop is like, I'm going to go, you know, let me go get Jesus and have a talk with Skanks. Now, Jacob is at the house. He's still having electrical problems, you know, and Carissa is still mad. I'm so fucking sick of Carissa. Of course, the house needs rewiring. Well, they cannot afford it. Well, Carissa wants Jacob to go get a job. I don't really think there's anything wrong with going to get a job. I mean, your house is falling apart, then, you know, and the bills ain't getting paid. Seems like that would be the very next thing in line, right? So even though she gets on my nerves, I don't think that that's asking too much. But Jacob is still not feeling it. And then we see Grace at the office. Um, she tells Darlene, you know, that's the assistant that's helping her, um, that she's not preaching anymore, that she's just going to be doing outreach ministry. And Darlene doesn't understand why. And Grace was like, with everything that's gone on, why would I? I don't think people want to see me preaching. And she was just like... Yeah, I mean, preaching is not the easy way to go, okay? But you shouldn't expect it to be easy. You just need to get the word of the Lord out. That's basically what Darlene was trying to tell Grace. Now, Bishop, he goes to Skank's office. And right before he walks in, we see Skank's in there. He bartering, honey. He trying to he trying to get, get something worked out with this real shady-looking man, okay? All black, um, dark skin, you know, beard, you know, leather coat. Uh, looking like he there to whoop some ass if he don't get what he want. And Skanks is trying to tell him, you know, just give me a little bit of time. I'll get it to you. But when the bishop walks in, of course, you know, Skanks gets rid of the guy. The guy give him a look like, okay, nigga, this ain't over. And Bishop tells uh, Skanks, stay away from my family. You know, you was able to suck Jacob in. And now I see you trying to do it with Grace. But I'm going to let you know you ain't doing it with my girl, Grace. Okay, I will fight you tooth and nail. Skanks is just looking at him like... Ain't nobody trying to do nothing to your family. And, and uh, Bishop tells him that the judgment is coming for skanks. So then Bishop goes back and he's proud of himself, okay? He goes and telling May to blow by blow, you know. And then I said, stay away from my family. You should have seen his face. You know, he's gloating and, and May was just like, okay, I'm glad you went and did all that. But I'm a, I'm a, the proof is in the pudding. We're going to see if Skanks decides to really leave our family alone. She's more concerned on why Jacob even left skanks why they parted ways anyway that there's probably more to that story because when carissa was trying to say something at the dinner that they had with rochelle did you see how quickly that jacob shut her down okay there's more to that story while they're talking the secretary comes in and tells bishop that uh, rochelle is on the line and may was like you know what go on and take that call because i'm about to go have uh, lunch with jacinta butler I'm trying to work her way back into the social club that Jacinta Butler is over. She tells Bishop, give Rochelle my best. Okay, with that look. You know how she's like. Now, Grace is going through Kevin's files. Now that he's gone, she's the outreach minister. And uh, she notices the, the, the fortitude for family flyer. Okay, and she reading up on it. And he was taking the damn black drop. 
<laughs> the ipecac or whatever it's called to throw up to suppress those gay images and she's just disgusted so she goes back and she sh shows it to bishop like see this is why we need to address this issue got gays out here taking shit to make them throw up just so that they can fight the feeling of being gay i mean it's wrong and this is a conversation between the new generation and the older generation uh bishop trying to be the man of god and knowing that he has to include everybody but also remembering feeling that being gay is wrong and he him not really knowing how to include these people in his church without alienating his base so bishop is like i just i don't know what to do grace wants to be way more active in saying that the gays are welcome at their church and he was like I, I just don't know what to do i'm gonna have to pray on that one now charity okay we see her with jabari and he's flirting and she's smiling and giggly and all that i was just like she's the worst actress <laughs> he hasn't been able to sell the song that she wrote you know he's down in nashville and they're in a different part of tennessee and so he brings like a little portable studio i'm supposing it, it could be so that she can work on music there and she was just like oh you don't want me to come down to nashville anymore he's like no that's not it i just you know i know that you know sometimes the lord might hit you and you might want to get something out right then and i'm 100 miles away so maybe this is better so now charity is not really sure what to think with jabari now we see may at lunch with jacinta butler and uh you know may how she can be she gets around to the point where she asks jacinta how does she know rochelle and uh turns out that rochelle is her tax person okay handles her money that's not what rochelle told uh may and bishop right i guess rochelle thought that um you know may was just gonna go along with that story but uh you are i told you you got to get up pretty early in the morning to pull one over on miss may right she was like oh well it just broke my heart you know she told me what happened at the other church and the jacinta was like oh she told you that wow like i didn't expect you to you know her to tell anybody that she's like yeah girl it's a, it's a shame that you know they put all the blame on her you know but you know it just basically was this whole story about rochelle was involved with some man i'm assuming probably the pastor and that it was this big scandal and uh, they didn't put rochelle's ass out of the church but then jacinta says but don't tell her anything that i told you because uh, she doesn't know that i know then that's when may is just like mm-hmm and now she's trying to push up on my man over there okay bitch ain't slick we see Zora and Isaiah studying, or they supposed to be studying, but they're in her bedroom. They're in her bed. Like, there ain't no damn couches around. What the hell you guys got to always be in the bed for? Of course, he wants to get busy. He wants to take a break and want to be kissing all on her and all of that. Y'all in the bed just asking for trouble. But, of course, her dad gets home. You know, she got to jump up and go open the door. And Jacob is just like, I know that ain't Isaiah in there. Okay, Isaiah, come on out. Now, you know you're not supposed to be in her room with the door clothes right isaiah says yes he says okay i'm gonna need you to respect my house respect the wishes of her mother and myself okay or don't bring your ass over here again you got that and um you know isaiah says yes sir and then he goes off on zora okay and i know you know better as well okay <laughs> and then when she tried to say something he said say what these people gonna hit my car he was like what I said, oh, if that wasn't no daddy sound right there. And she didn't say nothing else. He said, I didn't think so. Now, Bishop at the church and says May wouldn't listen to his, um, you know, him talking about how he had to go put skanks in his place. He's telling Rochelle, you know, I told him to stay away from my family. You know, I just put him in his place. And she was just like, well, very good. Okay, this confirms I made the best decision. And Bishop is like, what decision is that? And she's going to make Calgary her church home. Okay, so, you know, Bishop is happy about that. It's a good day in Calgary. Everybody is wondering ro what Rochelle might be. I think Rochelle might be the daughter of the man that got burnt up in the church. Remember, they were saying that he had a daughter but they couldn't remember who the other child was okay that's probably skank's sister but we'll see we'll see now jabari and charity you know he asked charity out to dinner so she's all googly eyed and excited so she goes over and asks grace if she can watch the baby okay grace is supposed to have a date with rick fox what is his name you guys i don't remember but anyway she's supposed to have a date with him but um charity you know asked if she could watch a baby and grace says okay 
then Grace breaks it to Rick Fox. Listen, I know we were supposed to go to dinner, um, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to make my sister know that I care about her and I'm going to watch the baby and maybe we can just be at the house, you know, pick up some food or cook at the house. And you know, Rick Fox is disappointed, but he says, okay. So that evening, Bishop and May are over at Jacob and uh, Carissa's house for dinner. And Bishop is telling them random stories about when he was a younger preacher and how he used to work all these odd jobs, you know, because he had a family that he had to take care of. And Carissa was just like, see, your daddy did it. What is the big deal? Okay. May even says that you remind me a lot of Bishop when he was younger. But of course, after that story, they start up on skanks. And they want to know, how did all this come about? You know, they in the house, they got the land and everything. Um, you know, what is exactly going on with skanks? Well, Jacob says, you know, that he said he would keep a secret, you know, and as a God-fearing man that he's going to keep to his word. You know, it ain't right for him to be gossiping about skanks right there. You guys know that Carissa is really dying, just chomping at the bit to tell. Bishop was like, it has to do with something because, you know, he's up there talking to some prison-looking dude. I mean, is he doing ministry at the prison? And Jacob was just like, I'm not even going to say nothing. Let that man deal with whatever he got going on over there and don't y'all worry about it. But like I said, Carissa got that look like she want to say something. And you know it's just a matter of time before she spilled a bean so when bishop and may are leaving you know they walk him to the door and uh, thanking him for coming and all of that um carissa was just like oh yeah now i want to talk to you about the wiring and jacob was like uh-uh uh-uh well, no, no do not do that I already told you about that. We already discussed that. Bishop and May are just like, what? You know, they, they want to help. But uh, Jacob was like, no, don't. I was like, what woman does that? Ain't absolutely no. You really trying to start a big argument with your husband. If you emasculate him like that by asking them for money when he didn't. Y'all already had that discussion. I was just like, oh, no, girl. You was really asking for something. When they left, he was just like, what is that? I told you specifically, don't say anything. And Carissa was just like, I don't care. You need a damn job. Okay, go get a job anywhere so that your damn wife and kids ain't stumbling around here in the damn dark or worried that the fucking house is going to catch on fire. And he was just like, listen, when I was out there creeping, I was doing wrong. You treated me bad. All right. Now that I'm trying to do right and be right, you still treating me the same fucking way. I'm going to need you to trust what I say and what I decide to do in my life. I will not have it. Okay. I'm going to wait on the Lord and I'm going to need you to do that too. I was just like, maybe we can meet in the middle. <laughs> wait on the Lord and get you a little part-time gig somewhere. I mean, I can see what Carissa is saying, but I mean, I guess I understand what he's saying as well. But you can't expect a woman to have much faith in you if you're not providing for your family. Now, Grace and Rick Fox, we see them at the house. They seem to have had a nice night. Um, Aiden at the house, you know, and she's taking care of the baby. And then they start discussing his work. You did this article on skanks. Why didn't you talk to my dad about it? He was just like, listen, we didn't already discuss that, you know, the whole work and the family thing. We're not going to mix that together. She's upset that he interviewed Carlton, the old music director, and didn't try to get the father's side, the other side of the story. So she's making a big deal out of it, at least to him, it sounds like a big deal. And he tells her, listen, maybe we don't need to do this. And she was like, do what? And he was like, maybe we don't need to do us. Like, you're pulling away from me. You know, we were supposed to go on a date today. You decide to babysit. You know, you're picking a fight with me over this ar um, article. And she was just like, I, well, I didn't really know we were fighting. She was like, but you pull away from me as well. You got this job in New York that you was thinking about going to. You won't even tell me why you won't go to church. And hello, I'm a pastor. So I was like, you know, you got your issues and things that you won't say either. I don't know how we expect really any of this to work. He was just like, well, you know what? I've never stuck around with anybody that has given me so little. I don't know why I'm doing it with you. That's my fault, I guess. So I'm, I'm going to have to just leave here, you know. So what started out to be a pretty good night turns out to be a pretty bad night. On top of that, Charity and Jabari, you know, after they had a dinner, she takes him to his hotel because I'm assuming he's leaving the next day. He gives her a little kiss on the on the cheek when she drops him off and he leaves out the car and she's just sitting there looking like a kiss on the cheek. Really? So she take it on back home. Grace is on the couch having a beer and uh, Charity was just like, uh, <laughs> I don't know how your date went, but mine was terrible. Grace was like, yeah, mine wasn't all that good either. And she was just like, hell, I just got a little peck on the cheek. I don't know if I attract, like, what do I attract? And Grace was like, I don't think he's gay, is he? She's like, child, I don't know what he is. 
that was probably the best little scene that Charity <laughs> did. I was cracking up. She was just like, I guess I, I guess folks just don't see it for me like that. I said, poor Charity, girl, somebody going to get with you. Just hold tight. Where Kevin at, y'all? <laughs> So they both, I guess, taking on the sleep and Grace is in bed. She gets a call from uh, Rick Fox and he asks her, you know, if she can come out to the front of the house and she goes out on the stairs and talks to him and he decides to tell her why he doesn't go to church anymore, that he was married, that his wife was, died in a car accident and when he um, was asking his pastor, you know, why did God kill, you know, take his wife, um, the pastor told him that it's best not to question God and after that he didn't go to church anymore. Okay, so he finally opens up and he tells Grace that. I and mean, Grace is not quite sure if they'll see each other again. You know, will I see you anymore? And he was like, you tell me. And she gives him a hug and um, then he says, well, yes. Okay, so I guess now that they've opened up that chapter, you know, maybe they can work on this relationship. And then later on that day, like I told you guys, that damn Carissa couldn't wait to rush over to uh, Calgary and let Bishop and May know about Skank's money problems, that he owes $250,000 to the Church of Triumph and that they don't even know it, that he's in this huge-ass bind, okay? And they ask her, could she prove it? And she says, no, but I know somebody who can. I said, Carissa, don't get wrapped up with that stuff with Skank's. That's a dangerous man. But Bishop and May, they excited about this news. Finally got something on Skank's. And, of course, she says, don't tell Jacob. All right, you guys, let me get off of here, okay, so I can get on back to work. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.